introduce you to our topic for today, which is the power quality challenges with high penetration of renewable systems. And it is a technical topic webinar and will be presented by Dr. Munira Batul, who is our um, lecturer at EIT and also a postgraduate supervisor. And later on, um, she will go ahead and introduce herself to us. Okay. Now, let us go ahead and move on to some reminders because in this webinar, we will be having some common questions and um, those questions would most likely include when the certificates would be issued and if there are recordings or copies of the slides and so on. So I would like to address that as early as now so that you can focus on the webinar without wondering uh, about the answers to these questions. So of course, we will be giving you a copy of the slides and the video recording of this webinar, and that will be sent to your email two business days from now. So please make sure to open your, I mean to double check your inbox and your spam folders as well. And for the certificate of attendance, we will be issuing that too. And that will be within the next four business days, but you would need to request for your attendance or certificate of attendance through a QR code that we will be showing after the end of the session. And also a link will be sent here in the chat so that you can also request for your certificates through the link. And for those who have issues hearing or seeing our slides and hearing the audio, please um, try to check your internet connection Please try to leave and join again or try another browser and try your audio settings as well. Okay, now before I endorse you to Dr. Manira, I'd like to go ahead and give you some tidbits of information about EIT. And of course, um, we would like to announced that we are a dedicated uh, institution that ensures our students would receive a world-class education and of course to gain skills that you can immediately implement in a workforce and we are also designated as an engineering specialist because we are one of the the only institutes in the world who specializes in engineering and we deliver a variety of courses from professional certificates, diplomas, advanced diplomas, undergraduate and graduate certificates, and also bachelor's and master's degree programs, and also a doctor of engineering program. And these programs are industry oriented because they are designed by industry experts, just like Dr. Minera, our presenter today. And that is to ensure that you as our students would graduate with cutting edge skills and those skills are valued by employers worldwide. And of course, aside from that, our program content remains current with the rapidly changing technology to be able to keep up with industry developments. We also have a world-class Australia accredited um, education. So our vocational programs, as well as our higher education programs or degrees are registered and accredited by the Australian government. And we also have some programs that are also recognized under the three international engineering accords by Engineers Australia. And those accords are the Dublin Accord, the Washington Accord, and we also have the Sydney Accord. And that leads us to our industry experience lecturers. So we, we don't only have lecturers that are highly experienced in the field, but also subject matter specialists or experts with applied knowledge that you can 
gain from them and you can apply the workforce. And we also have technologies for both online and on campus studies that would be very helpful for us to be able to form a large global pool of expertise because we don't only limit our um, resources within one building or within one place, but we make it global for you. We also have a unique delivery model because of the methodology that we have at EIT and we make use of live interactive webinars. We also have, of course, our international pool of expert lecturers that I mentioned a little earlier. And we also have our dedicated learning support officers. They are the go-to persons that our students can um, call or can communicate with whenever our students would have concerns regarding their studies. And that is the support that we give to our students from beginning to end. We also have our state-of-the-art equipment and learning materials. We also provide workshops, remote laboratories, and simulation software. And that's it about EIT. I hope that um, it gives you more information and um, it can help you in your goals and learning journey as well. Now let's go ahead and um, endorse you to Dr. Manira and she will be our presenter for today. So Dr. Manira, I will be giving the floor to you. You can go ahead and introduce yourself or tell us something about yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liza, for handing it over to me. And a very a warm welcome to all of you, um, the persons and uh, people who are joining from all around the world over here. So I hope uh, you will enjoy this uh, topic and discussion. So before starting a discussion on the webinar, uh, a bit of introduction about myself. As uh, Liza told you, I am Dr. Munira Batula, and uh, I have done my PhD. Uh, in electrical engineering from Curtin University, Australia. And uh, I have been uh, linked up with the academic and uh, research side uh, since now. It's been 15 years. So I am teaching and uh, working with EIT as an online lecturer and uh, a postgraduate supervisor as well. Uh, my uh, research domains basically related with modern power systems like microgrids, smart grids, their operation, working, optimization, and talking about their power quality side. So let's start with today's topic. So today's topic we are going to discuss is about power quality challenges with the high penetration of renewable systems. So the topic uh, of discussion today is uh, split into three domains. In domain one, we will be discussing about that what is renewable energy and uh, how the penetration uh, takes place in the power system of this renewable energy. And I will also be introducing you a little bit about that what are the statistics we are having uh, now in Australia uh, that are working with renewable energy and how it is progressing. Domain number two uh, will be give you an intro about that what are potential power quality challenges we are facing uh, in terms of this renewable energy penetration and integration in our power system. And in the end, I will be uh, also discussing about uh, one of my uh, research project, which I have supervised. It is successfully completed and we have sorted out some power quality challenges inside this uh, research project. So let's start with domain one first. So domain one, as uh, I mentioned earlier, that it is about renewable energy. And uh, we will be having this renewable energy penetration in our power system. Uh, we will be discussing and looking towards uh, as an intro that uh, what is uh, basically renewable energy. 
So talking about renewable energy globally, uh, if we uh, look towards the basic logic and reason that why we are looking towards the, the development of renewable energy resources and their implementation. So we can see that uh, now uh, you, you can uh, you can uh, see um, uh, look all around the world and you can see that declining of uh, fossil fuel supplies is happening all uh, uh, over all the globe. The reason is that because uh, most of our power generation in the past, it has been from the fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, but they are area restricted. They uh, also have like uh, not available uh, abundantly all uh, everywhere or all around the world. So that's why declining uh, these uh, fossil fuels is also a concern. And we can see that uh, the costs are increasing day by day. Uh, especially if we look towards, uh, uh, if we go back to past uh, six to seven or 10 years, then we can see a, a huge in, uh, investment and has been made in these fossil fuels, but the cost has uh, got very high and they become uh, very expensive. So there are political concerns also, because if we want to manage the economical sector, in our country then we of course talk about the political concerns which are associated with the implementation and usage of these fossil fuels and of course the major concern which is basically now the concern of all of the world that uh, drastic weather changings uh, the global warming pollution uh, and concerns are there and being an electrical engineer talking about fossil fuel implementation of course, we know that when they are being burned, then we have a lot of uh, for fumes and a lot of uh, pollution which is coming out of uh, their burning. So that's why environmental concerns, of course, are there. So then uh, we talk about the technologies which we uh, have uh, now a days we are using. So the most famous technologies which are being introduced and which are being utilized by all of the countries, eh, they are the biomass one in which we prefer the usage of, uh, you know, this uh, waste materials so we can burn them up and we can get energy to uh, for the production of electricity. Of course, that energy is required for um, the generators which you want to utilize for production of electricity, but the mechanism for the renewable energy technologies can be different. They can be geothermal, like geothermal applications are uh, also like area restricted, but they can be, we are using the energy which is uh, present underground or deep down the earth layers. Hydro is uh, not a new technology because we are uh, using hydro technology uh, since uh, uh, being a lot of uh, or maybe half of the century, it is there. So uh, hydro is uh, the common one, uh, but solar and wind, they both got major popularity in the past few decades. And solar and winds are now very uh, having impact, like huge impact on uh, renewable energy sector, and they are being utilized by the countries in order to uh, cut down the demand of their fossil fuels or for the purpose of generation mix. So now coming to some of the Australia based statistics, Australia uh, all, uh, is having, having the initiative for renewable energy sector. The major reason is that because Australia is having a set of a good weather condition and environmental conditions are there. The, Australia is uh, having abundant amount of solar energy. Uh, there are so many coastal areas which are there. So that's why wind energy is also popular. So if we look towards the statistics which are provided until uh, the past few, uh, like past two years until 2021. So we can see that uh, uh, the potential increase can be seen in solar, wind and bioenergy applications. And this is because of the reason that uh, Australia has taken a lot of initiatives. One of the initiative is there from ARENA. ARENA is Australian Renewable Energy Agency, and it is having a particular mission statement that they support 
the projects that advance and that implement renewable energy technologies along the innovation chain. And uh, they do not support only on the initial levels, but on the project based implementation level as well. So uh, there are a lot of uh, projects which are being uh, funded by ARENA and uh, huge budget also have been invested uh, particularly and specifically for renewable energy sector. Along with that, uh, uh, the basic uh, one of the program which is run by ARENA is related to distributed energy integration program. So this distributed energy uh, uh, integration program is the collaboration with the government agencies and there is a lot of deregulation also uh, in common use from Australia. So lots of, a lot of uh, private companies like solar companies are working and uh, they are taking uh, the advantage of uh, uh, using and implementing the distributed energy resource concept. So uh, this is the basic difference what we have in our uh, conventional generation and between our uh, renewable energy that uh, conventional generation has the centralized uh, power generation strategy and uh, distributed energy resources are basically included in renewable energy where we are having the power generation resources which are dispersed all in our power system. So by uh, we can say that uh, uh, by running this distributed energy integration program, ARENA has uh, uh, given a boost to renewable energy implementation and uh, its uh, uh, integration all around uh, the country of Australia. Uh, along with ARENA, there is uh, also one of the cooperation which is uh, known as uh, Clean Energy Finance Cooperation. The mission values for Clean Energy uh, Finance Cooperation is basically relevant to uh, having the ambition for thriving to low emission future. Low emission future is essential for having a low amount of carbon dioxide in our uh, in our uh, environment, which is basically uh, being a power electrical engineer, we know that fossil fuels burning actually produce carbon dioxide. So that's why this uh, corporation, they have set up their mission and target until 2050, where they are committed to accelerate the transition to net zero emissions. And this is uh, particularly the need of, I think, uh, like every country uh, has is working uh, they're uh, at their side uh, to implement this because uh, we all can see drastic weather changes uh, going on and uh, there are uh, like uh, natural disasters which are taking place all around the world because of this uh, uh, drastic weather, weather changings or harsh climates. So uh, this is uh, the statistics which we can see uh, in Australia. Uh, so you can see the progress uh, in all of the states of Australia. Uh, so in all of the states of Australia, the basic, uh, as I have introduced you to, you to ARENA, and then uh, we have uh, looked towards one of the clean energy cooperation. So jointly, they are putting the effort to attract their, uh, attract their companies and their customers to also have uh, this renewable energy. And because of that, you can see still there are fossil fuels because we cannot uh, completely take out our fossil fuels because of the reason that we have to have synchronous generators uh, electricity in our system for the better power quality. But we can see that renewable penetration is increasing and uh, uh, as per the statistics uh, which are taken by arena uh, in the year two, 2021 they have seen that tismania is the most uh, highest state which is having renewables uh, included inside so uh, this is uh, one of the example which i have included for South Australia, another state in Australia. So uh, that uh, Australian state is, uh, you can see overall, they are also have increased their penetration of renewables. They are uh, promoting and uh, they are uh, uh, attracting the people so that they can get more penetration of renewable in terms of solar and wind. So wind uh, implementation has been done uh, largely and uh, uh, as per 
uh, the as per their records, it shows that uh, the penetration of renewable energy is increasing day by day in their system. So they they are using like a rooftop solar systems. They are also having uh, the industries which are using solar farms. So solar farm concept is also being utilized now. Now uh, over here uh, you can see that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this much amount of electricity overall, if we calculate for all of the states for the major states in Australia, then we can see that uh, in terms of uh, uh, 9,331 megawatts has been uh, generated and coming from renewables. Total investment of 18.4 billion dollars has been done. And this sector, of course, when they have settled down this sector, then it has opened the job market for a lot of engineers. So the, a lot of jobs has created for people as well. And uh, economic economics, of course, are re relevant to this sector. So therefore, economics also uh, get a raise in overall. Uh, and we can see that uh, this renewable integration also have a very positive impact on environmental condition. So talking about now renewable energy uh, resources. So renewable energy resources, uh, I am going to discuss two of the potential renewable energy resources, which are uh, common in Australia and common in all around the world as well. So wind energy, we know that uh, wind energy is actually a concept in which we are using the energy of wind uh, and uh, we will be utilizing the speed of wind for uh, running the wind turbines which can work with our generators and they can also produce uh, a very handsome amount of electricity for us. So the large wind developments, uh, they can also be implemented uh, and they can facilitate different types of loads in terms of residential, commercial, and industrial setups. So uh, in terms of Australia, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, Australian uh, wind energy projects uh, which are uh, still uh, boosting up in different states. So uh, we can see that uh, popular states which, are, which have implemented a bulk amount of uh, wind energy are South Australia, Victoria, NSW and Queensland and other states, they have a wind energy, but of course, wind energy is also linked up with the, the application and with the availability of uh, strong wind speed, which is normally common in coastal areas. So that's why the other uh, uh, the other states are also having, but it is uh, on the low scale. So coming to solar energy, now we all are aware of solar energy. We are using a lot of solar energy uh, in our uh, systems nowadays. We are having rooftop solar PVs which are working on the roofs of your houses or uh, your commercial uh, buildings or industries are having solar. So solar energy is uh, the most popular way of renewable energy which we are having and using uh, in all of the areas because sun, of course, uh, is there for all of us and uh, using that sun energy is a good idea. So uh, this is the most popular source of renewable energy which is being utilized uh, and uh, uh, every country they are having these facilities. They have their manufacturing of solar PV panels and they are also promoting private companies who can actually work towards the uh, the solar energy installations for the customers and also giving them access to their usage as well. So this is basically the access thing comes to uh, smart grid nature, whether we are using that uh, facility of smart grid or not, and then our customers can get, get benefit of that, that uh, they can uh, go to the on-grid option, uh, they can go to off-grid option for solar implementation, or net metering option in which they can sell or purchase electricity to their utility. So this is a uh, solar statistics, uh, which uh, has been uh, set up for Australia with the vision of 2030. 
So uh, the vision of 2030 is like that, that uh, uh, you can see a gradual increase can be seen with the passage of years in uh, solar implementation. And by 2030, they are actually uh, they are we are, we are hoping that uh, it will rise as much as to 80 point, approximately 80 gigawatt and uh, a lot of projects uh, still are in uh, in implementation and uh, they are working towards this mission and that's why uh, with the clean energy foundation uh, with the mission of 2050 uh, we are hoping that uh, net zero emissions can be achieved by having this uh, implementation large scale implementation of solar so these are uh, some of the records which show us that uh, uh, rooftop solar implementation actually have seen a boost uh, instead of like uh, having the situation which we can see has occurred in the past few years of pandemic and uh, we were uh, facing all around the world this uh, situation was going on and economical things are going on but uh, still the rooftop implementations they have raised uh, and in Australia people are now getting uh, attracted and uh, they are uh, more uh, using this uh, solar energy concept. So now uh, talking about uh, some of the recent statistics which uh, uh, have been uh, noticed in solar, wind and storage. Uh, now one of the uh, tricky thing about solar which I always mention is that that solar actually cannot be available at the night time. So this is one of the tricky thing. So that's why uh, along with solar, it is always uh, a, a good idea to have a storage. And uh, maybe we can also take help from the mixed generation if wind is available or uh, we can take support from our utility side as well. So uh, this is uh, one of the statistics which shows us that uh, starting 2015 you can see 2015 was having very small share and uh, uh, by the passage of time this share in terms of wind in terms of solar in terms of lithium -ion batteries now uh, different other types of batteries has been introduced as well and uh, uh, some wind farm implementation uh, it has been gradually now increasing since the year of 2022 and uh, now uh, a, a large and rapid growth in a solar and wind and battery is uh, uh, is there and can be seen uh, in australia so now uh, coming to uh, after these statistics let's have a look on that what's the concept of distributed generation actually the concept concept of distributed generation is that that instead of having a centralized generation as we were having in the past for our conventional power system instead of having that uh, concept of centralized generation we need to have the generation which should be implemented at different locations in our uh, in our power system so as I have mentioned earlier, the rooftop uh, at your uh, houses, rooftop solar at your houses is one of the examples. So uh, distributed generation, it can utilize uh, solar and wind. It can uh, have uh, renewable energy, which uh, can be converted into electricity. So basic concept is to have a dispersed generation. Do not rely only on the centralized generation concept as we have had in our uh, past, but uh, having renewable energy concept all around the world. So now this is uh, the renewable energy resource interconnection. Now we are having uh, the concept over here. So uh, we have centralized stations, centralized stations which may be working with the conventional ways or which may be working with your renewable energy sector in the firm in the uh, form of wind farms or large scale pv or geothermal so uh, then uh, after this we will be integrating that uh, generation into our electric power system and then after gen uh, integration to our electric power system we will be transmitting and distributing this energy to our customers and our customer also can have distributed generation concept in which you can see that small scale pv 
wind fuel cells can also be there which not only relying on the centralized station but also they are having uh, distributed generation at their own end so integration of their distributed generation system it uh, is not uh, uh, we can say a very uh, instantaneous application it is basically this integration required a lot of uh, technical challenges we need to have advanced technology for this purpose we need to follow technical codes and standards like uh, we have standards uh, uh, provided to us by ieee iec these are the major I, ieee is uh, institute of electrical and electronic engineers the so this uh, these are the uh, international platforms which provides us technical codes and standards and are international standards which could be followed and for dg system integration particularly these technical standards needs to be there and then coming to this side that uh, every country have their own policies procedures regulations which uh, they need to follow and uh, uh, by their uh, uh, by having all of these procedure it would be possible to have the integration of distributed generation concept so coming to, uh, towards the distributed generation stakeholders what kind of uh, like uh, uh, companies or people they are involved in this whole system so it's not only a system which is uh, linked up with your customers or your uh, suppliers it is kind of system which is uh, linked up with your uh, who is the system owner actually system owner can be your uh, government agencies or because we are having the regulation concept so therefore uh, maybe uh, some person can be also having uh, the owner ownership of that uh, uh, small companies then who is system integrator who uh, like what kind of system integration you want whether it's a renewable energy and which kind of renewable energy you want you need to follow the regulations which are set up by your government of course then uh, you need to look towards that uh, how much authority will be given and then utility will also be involved so that's why this is basically the concept of deregulation in which we say that uh, government agencies will be there and then we'll be working mutually with the private companies to make the success of this uh, distributed generation concept so now a uh, long list uh, over here uh, so uh, of course uh, uh, best practices for dg interconnection a lot of uh, interconnections are there we have uh, uh, you know uh, in the past uh, we can say utilities might be having monopoly at their side they were generating they were giving us only bills and we were responsible to pay back the bills but nowadays it's not like that we are having uh, our customer freedom or customer uh customer you can say involvement in the system so uh, our customer can also see through online application and guideline that uh, uh, for which electricity they are responsible to pay for and uh, uh, through their web portals through their mobile apps they can have this idea about how much generation is there and even they can uh, set set up their generation accordingly for example if they in the some hours uh, of the day they are not using electricity so they can go into contract with some private uh, company which actually can give them incentive uh, if they are not using much loads in the peak hours so that peak hour uh, low usage from the customer can uh, help the utilities and our private companies to basically handle that uh, load congestion which can happen in the peak loads so uh, coming to the more points we can have lower cost we can have uh, uh, some rules and standards and uh, uh, some apps which are working then standardized distribution modeling platform will be there we have stronger communication because nowadays it's a fast uh, so like we are having a very fast uh, uh, fast communications you can see that uh, uh, we uh, want to have everything to be done very fastly because of the use of internet and uh, apps so that's why this is also a need of power system and that's what we have in our uh, dg interconnection and uh, uh, this uh, standard impact uh, can have a lot of cost effective 
process in our system uh, your uh, private companies actually they give some incentives to attract the customers uh, to actually uh, tell them that uh, what actually they can use and uh, what they need to pay for so uh, this is a kind of also one of the attractive uh, strategy which uh, can be implemented in the market and this uh, market strategy will be very successful in terms of catching the customers uh, to them so coming towards uh, uh, some uh, successful uh, key, some successful projects and what key objectives they can have they can have renewable energy resources they can uh, set up the paths and timelines uh, for which they are uh, responsible uh, set up the paths and timelines uh, for which they are uh, responsible to meet the demand of the load they need to have very uh, wise and knowledgeable persons along with them proper documentation is the need of uh, this uh, successful of the projects and of course uh, if you are planning to set up a solar company and uh, i'm sure that uh, uh, many people may be over here in this webinar are working with the solar company or they are they are owner of the solar company so you know that uh, a very uh, attractive model plan or business model can work uh, correctly so uh, in that model plan you are not only uh, yeah like you are not only interested to give uh, uh, generation and uh, facilitation to your load but you know also have to have some kind of profit so solid business plan of course uh, need to be there and works so some uh, renewable uh, quantified resources how they can uh, work for us in a better way we need to uh, investigate for our system we need to do proper analysis of our system the uh, primary screening is required that how much load demand is there then we need to do the screening in terms that what kind of renewable energy resources can work better for your area then feasibility study is very important feasibility study is important because of the reason that uh, particularly we have this problem that uh, uh, we are not able to maintain a balance between the generation and load then it will it might be uh, you know a disaster uh, then uh, our customer will not be happy our industrial setups they do not work so that's why feasibility study is very important and then of course uh, dg sizing their design uh, proper design is required okay so this was uh, actually the discussion about our domain one to give you an idea what are renewable energy resources what are the statistics we are following in australia and what are actually the overall rules and principles and guidelines for these renewable energy resources now coming to uh, the basic question over here that uh, we say that renewable energy is very good i always say that renewable energy is very good clean energy is there and uh, it can actually give you uh, profit in terms of like or you can say benefit in terms of cost but the problem is that when you come to technical side and you try to integrate this renewable energy then there are a lot of power quality challenges which we have to face being a power system engineer and researcher working in this field i always say that uh, renewable energy is very good but it is good if you are having a better power quality after its integration so domain 2 of discussion uh, for today is talking about that potential power quality challenges which we face after integration of this renewable energy now let's come to the basic definition of power quality what it is uh, actually power quality is talking about the characteristics of current voltage and frequency so in technical terms if we say current voltage and frequency now these are the three parameters we need to monitor them we need to look at them that whether they are within the permissible limits of the standards or not so that's why this uh, current voltage and frequency can bring in this idea to us that what is actually a power quality now talking about our system which is working nowadays we are having two challenges in our system the two challenges are that we are having integration of renewable energy of course and because of integration the desire what we have in our system is this one that this type of waveforms should be there in our system but actually what we are getting we are getting this type of waveforms 
which are distorted ones and these distorted waveforms the the responsibility of these distorted waveforms are because that uh, we are having renewable energy integration as well as we have non linear loads in our system now, what is uh, non linear load uh, to be very uh, simple non linear load is actually a kind of load which uh, may be working in your system at one moment but at the other moment it is not present so uh, you like your laptops your mobile phones you put them on charging at once but then you take them out so these are this is actually non linearity of the load and uh, um, like uh, being uh, a power system engineer working in this field we can see this potential impact of non linear loads on our health of the system so because of that distorted waveforms we cannot say that uh, the technical standards uh, may be met all the time so these are the power quality challenges because of this integration of renewable energy and as well as non linearity from the load side so these power quality challenges we our system is facing nowadays it is voltage it can be voltage sag which actually can be distorted uh, and your voltage waveform which is ideally should be like this so your ideal voltage waveform should be like this but because of these uh, voltage sag and other power quality problem it looks like this so and then you say at your end the customer actually can see that uh, voltage is dropping down or maybe voltage swells can be there in which magnitude of voltage may be rising very high the distortion of the waveforms can be there which can produce noises in the system and harmonics can be there now these actually uh, these uh, first three problems they are associated with the voltage parameter or voltage quality the harmonic parameter is associated with the frequency of the system the transients are related that they try to bring down the stability of the system yet they make your system unstable they make the health of your system unstable in terms of power quality and flickers now flicker actually is an i uh, is a power quality challenge which can be seen by the customer themselves for example you might have noticed in your uh, load operation that uh, your tungsten bulbs they sometime they uh, flicker or they basically do not uh, operate well they are having a little bit distortions or disturbances in their operation so that is basically flicker and it can be seen by human eye as well so other power quality challenges they are technical they can be seen in terms of the waveforms but flicker is one kind of power quality problem which can be seen by human eye as well so these all are potential power quality challenges which our system is nowadays facing because of the integration of renewable energy so these are the power quality technical standards which are defined internationally and uh, whenever we are integrating renewable energy we need to look at the voltage current and frequency of our system and need to match that values with these standards so this is basically you can say a standard guideline which is available for uh, electrical engineers uh, if they are having a voltage sag problem for example in the system then they need to refer to iec and ieee standards which are mentioned over here i have included it over here for your information that flicker problems which is also one of the power quality problem it can be seen and uh, monitored by referring to iec 6100 or ieee standard harmonics which are the frequency problem it can it can be monitored by these two standards and then one of the interesting um, a standard which is uh, defined for power quality test measurement and monitoring and it can be available by IEEE 1159 and IEC 6100430 so uh, this power quality problem actually it was there in our system conventional system but it become the talk of the town when we have integration of renewable energy uh, uh, so much because these power quality challenges are getting very very critical for us because we are having that kind of renewable energy resources which are not having smooth power output uh, for example you can see that in your solar application 
you will not be having a sunny day uh, every time you will be having cloudy weathers rainy weathers so the output of pv gets affected so that's why that power output then will be bringing in a lot of power quality problems in your system and that's basically is needed to be addressed and this power these power quality standards they were there previously but they have got a lot of uh, modifications and uh, a lot of additions have been done in the past few years when we have uh, got a lot of uh, integration of renewable energy now after uh, getting idea about uh, uh, our renewable energy what it is and what is power quality now let's have a look on one of the research study which i have done uh, in my project and uh, how we have addressed this power quality problem in uh, in the study so uh, the, the, these are some of the few details about uh, this project which uh, i have uh, successfully completed so the title of research project uh, which uh, we have conducted it was the power quality improvement of a distribution system which was having integration of large scale solar farm so it the uh, actually the implementation of uh, this uh, renewable energy in this project was solar and uh, we try to uh, mitigate these power quality problems which we have faced in terms of voltage current and active power by using hybrid modular multi level converter and zero sequence control so uh, i was the supervisor of this project we successfully completed in july 2023 and the findings of this research got published in one of the elsewhere journal and i have also included this uh, source link over here uh, you can find out this research article on this uh, uh, re uh, this link and it will be available to you once after this webinar we will be sharing slides with you so you can access it and uh, you can read out the details i will be sharing uh, some quite uh, some uh, some interesting details and uh, results with you all over here that is uh, basically power quality related thing so the key ideas we have presented in this research actually is to model an efficient multi uh, level modular converter with the hybrid approach so hybrid in like that we were having large scale solar farm integration we were dealing with our loads so before the load we have implemented this mmlc but we have noticed that uh, the addition of only multi level converter was not enough zero sequence control was also needed so that's why we have uh, then tested our system with the zero sequence control and then we have proposed controller scheme uh, with the mix of this mmlc and zero sequence and we also have utilized the mppt application which is the maximum power point tracking application in solar so uh, some technical uh, details which uh, were there so some of the objectives which uh, we were after which uh, we were looking we actually wanted to integrate large scale solar farm through this research and uh, wanted to look towards the health of current voltage and active power we we posed in this research that if we can utilize the modular multi level converter which have fewer igpt switches which is actually a power electronic based circuitry so we can eventually also reduce the losses of the system as well and the power quality issues such as voltage current and power they can be satisfactorily can be improved like we can bring down the problems of power quality by having this mmlc in our system to enhance this uh, mmlc approach we also have uh, mitigated the unbalances with the help of zero sequence control zero sequence control is actually a popular control strategy which is applied to those systems which are showing unbalance to us they are not in balance for example if you um, you have uh, uh, uh you have standard and you have said that 220 volt is the uh, very uh, good and appropriate voltage for the performance of your system but you are not getting 220 volt so you can 
actually maintain the balance between load and your generation by having some control approach and that is zero sequence control which we have implemented over here so uh, we have tested this system with the help of uh, pscad software pscad is uh, for for those who are not aware of pscad pscad is a famous software which is utilized by power system engineers and uh, it uh, gives us promising results uh, in terms of uh, research and of course uh, the findings of this research can be implemented by the industries for uh, designing and implementation procedures so uh, this is uh, the schematic diagram uh, which was uh, proposed for a modular multi level converter in which you can see that uh, we had utilized uh, solar arrays or solar integration was there and along with this solar integration we have proposed the implementation of parallel and series combination of our igbt switches so that if your power from the solar it is getting higher because over generation is also possible from solar side or uh, maybe if uh, cloudy or rainy weather is there then it will be giving you a power output which is lower than the expected one so these igbt switches are there to adjust that power for our load side and this is a control scheme i generally tell you uh, that what this control scheme is you can find out the more technical details uh, in our research paper as well but uh, to give you an idea of this uh, technical approach you can see over here that three types of controls are there so this is our main controller which is basically uh, having a control on maximum power output from solar side this is our decoupled controller which is working with igbts and this is our zero sequence control now zero sequence control actually has been implemented after mmlc to now zero sequence control actually has been implemented after mmlc to uh, further uh, mitigate or improve the situation of unbalance uh, and what is unbalance we have noticed down unbalance in terms of voltage current and active power now why particularly active power uh, a few persons over here maybe uh, want to know that why active power why not reactive power active power because we were working from the aspect of load side so that's why uh, we were interested to have a tight control on active power so our loads can uh, be uh, work can work smoothly and uh, they do not have uh, any problem when there will be some change in the output of solar system so this is uh, the control uh, strategy which we have utilized uh, we have uh, uh noticed and observed the voltage and current and then we have uh, monitored that uh, whether there is any deviation in the voltage and current as compared to ieee standard which is a uh, which i have shown you earlier so we have looked for it for power quality test and uh, if there was any uh, any deviation uh, then we have looked at the ratio which we were having in terms of voltage and current deviations we have compared it with the normal values which are provided to us by the standard and then we have uh, looked at the possibility that if unbalance is like that that uh, we want to increase or decrease the voltage because unbalance can be at any uh, any side it can be increased or it can be decreased so that's why we have proposed that if it is this is the case then our mmlc and our zero sequence control will increase the voltage if it is required decrease the voltage if it is required or uh, uh, in this case if uh, our deviation is not there then everything will be smooth and then we keep on measuring the voltage and current as per normal uh, normal requirements of the system so some uh, results which we have uh, uh, analyzed uh, in this uh, study so uh, the results i am going to present you over here on the basis of our different uh, different strategies which we have implemented so in this uh, uh, whole uh, implementation we uh, have noticed that uh, what's the ongoing current what's the ongoing voltage 
this is the voltage and what's the ongoing power values this is active power value so uh, we have noticed that uh, uh, in this research that current and voltage were good and they were according to limit but power got uh, a problem and that was basically this one is the grid voltages which were good and uh, this is the power which was fed to the grid because our solar was working and uh, it was uh, working in cooperation with the grid so that's why we need to be very careful in terms of power because it was if it was having power quality problem it was not according to standard then our utility will not be able to accept that power which is having power quality issues with it so that's why uh, the first case study was the analysis side then uh, the second case study was to monitor the shading condition now shading condition in terms of because your solar panels they are exposed to environment so you may expect that when cloudy weather is there when rainy weather is there then shading will occur so that shading actually will impact on the output of your solar so that's why we have noticed that with the shading condition random power outputs has been noticed in our three phases because it was a three phase system as you can see current is in three phase and three phase is uh, normally the system which we work on so uh, in the next uh, study we have noticed for uh, that uh, uh, the previous case study was without zero sequence uh, injection we were only using mmlc without zero sequence control injection but when we have in, uh, investigated that if zero sequence injection is done in the system after mmlc then this is the power output which we are getting and the similar power output is there almost similar for all of the three phases successfully which was actually needed for the system now you can see over here the different shading condition which was uh, 500 megawatt uh, per meter square the previous one was 750 uh, watt meter per square so over here we have utilized we have uh, lowered down the shading problem so uh, we have noticed again the problem uh, without the zero sequence and this is the case which we have got after zero sequence so you can see the smooth and balanced power has been achieved so this is the summary of these all case studies i have included over here to show you some of the technical results so the initial problem in this uh, project was uh, to uh, address the power quality challenges which we have after integration of our large scale solar farm which was working in cooperation with the utility to facilitate the load so we have proposed initially hybrid mmlc which is multi uh, modular multi level converter the current was good voltage was also good but power was uh, uh, it is good with the hybrid mmlc but uh, it was good uh, when shading condition is not there when your solar is working in a perfect sunny weather so when we have zero uh, sequence uh, uh, problem and when we have seen that if zero sequence is not there and the problem of shading occurs so 750 watt per meter square shading has been observed so you can see instant change in current instant change in voltage in the three phases these these abc are phases and instant rapid variation in your uh, power can also be seen but in this shading condition when we have utilized zero sequence then your current is now under like 17 ampere voltage is good and almost your power from all of the phases are lying between like uh, uh, 1670 to 1700 watts similar approach has been utilized and it's been observed for 500 watt meter per, uh, watt per meter square for the shading condition with and without and you can see without zero sequence approach it was it was there but it was having unbalance okay so mmlc actually has tried to uh, do the switching and to address but it was unbalanced and your with uh, zero sequence it is kind of uh, now the balanced approach which has been achieved so uh, now coming to the uh, conclusions of this case study so the conclusion are that that uh, operation of grid connected solar pv actually can 
have the uh, should have the converter topology so that's why uh, being a power system engineer working in this field i always say that installation of these kind of systems which are renewable energy systems is always costly because it is not only that you are implementing your renewable energy but it is also like uh, you are having uh, you know uh, control strategies and converters which are working zero sequence voltage uh actually has uh, shown us very promising results and they it has addressed the unbalance very well in our system so it is important to mention that the converter model can also be utilized for more power generation by adding more solars because it was actually a kind of uh, a simulation study so that's why uh, we we have proposed that if uh, it's uh, wanted to like some of the industry want to it, adopt it then they can work it out with uh, increasing the rating of your uh, mmlc with uh, having uh, some voltage control from the zero sequence and uh, having more solar integration but battery storage uh, can be one of the future approaches which we are trying now to implement along with it so this this research is still going on and uh, these these are so far the results we have got very good uh, power quality results what we have got with mmlc and zero sequence approach so uh, in the end um, i want to say at the end that uh, power quality actually is a challenge for uh, all of us uh, which are you who are using renewable energy so renewable energy is a very very uh, friendly environment friendly and clean way of power production but uh, uh, power core challenges along with renewable energy needs to be addressed very well otherwise it will uh, actually have potential impact on the health of our power system and our customer may face flickering unbalanced problems so if satisfaction of customers it's also needed okay everyone so that's all from my side i hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, all of the discussion and uh, i have included uh, all of the links uh, which I, i have discussed the details of uh, them the slides are having links so you can access that links for further details and uh, for your own uh, study so i hand over uh, back to lisa now and uh, that's all from my side and enjoy the rest of your day Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, um, Dr. Manura. And um, for those who have questions, I would like to um, give you a chance to drop your questions in the chat so that Dr. Manura can go ahead and answer them, especially the, the topic-related questions. And I have one here from Aziz. Um, uh, question is about um, following solar system integration. Is fault level measurement conducted, and has solar integration altered fault levels? Um, do you uh, want to uh, to? Uh, yes, Liza. Thank you so much. So yes, Aziz. Uh, thanks for your question. First of all, uh, so in this study, uh, we worked out with the power quality side. and as i told you that now we are working with the battery approach so the fault level detection it's monitoring and uh, the uh, specifically the specific type of faults which can occur they are we are investigating them and uh, so far uh, some good results are there but uh, still we want uh, we are we want to a uh, more uh, polish that results so this strategy actually can address fault levels as well because you can see switching techniques as there so fault level can be addressed but uh, uh, of course we need to look that uh, uh, what uh, level of current and uh, what level of voltage should be settled down with fault detecting devices for example if we want to integrate some over current or over voltage or under voltage and under current uh, strategy fault current control strategy over here so this is a uh, uh, further uh, uh, further work which actually can be done this technique as well okay thank you so much for that um we have more questions in here um the next one is from sir rafa and uh, the question says has australia implement any renewable energy grid connected systems 
If yes, which of the techniques is used to synchronize the integration into the grid effectively, irrespective of the renewable energy's intermittent nature? Uh, thanks, uh, Serafa, for your question. Uh, in Australia, yes, uh, a lot of states in Australia, they have implemented this uh, renewable energy concept. And interesting thing is that uh, one of the state, uh, Victoria, they once tried that uh, full renewable energy uh, should be there, but uh, they were not successful. And the reason was that that they were having problem uh, with uh, you know integration and the uh, droop control strategy is there, which actually has been utilized for this purpose. Okay, now. Next is, um, what is the impact of fluctuations in renewable energy production on the stability of the electrical grid and how can it be addressed? That's the first question from Sir Ruza, but there's another one. I'll just say it after the question. Uh, okay, uh, Sir Ruza, thanks for your question. Actually, um, the impact of renewable energy uh, is uh, like that, that uh, it can have potential impact on the synchronism or uh, the synchronous generators which are working on your utility side. So that's why stability of electrical grid can get affected because uh, when once you integrate renewable energy resources, it directly can affect your voltage and current. And of course, uh, your uh, uh, traditional power systems or power plants, they are working with synchronous generators, having constant speed inside. So they this change in voltage and current, they actually attack on their uh, that speed and maybe synchronism will not be there. So that's why uh, we always have to address in one of the other research which, uh, which we have conducted. Uh, we have found that uh, uh, if, uh, we can propose some flywheel strategy in order to uh, address that stability challenges which we face when we integrate solar in our transmission side or in our distribution side, then that flywheel, uh, flywheel can have good impact on stability and they can uh, work with uh, progressing and uh, uh, having more stability in, on the grid side. Uh, so what's the next question, Liza? How can mining companies integrate renewable energy sources to reduce their carbon footprint while maintaining the reliability of their energy supply? Uh, thanks, Liza. Uh, so uh, thanks for your question. Um, uh, yes, uh, I uh, can tell you one of the interesting experiences which I had in my one of the project that we have done with the mining uh, project. Uh, you have uh, mentioned mining projects, so that's why I'm uh, telling you over here. So that uh, mine was uh, suffering with uh, uh, transmission line losses because uh, mine location, you know, they are uh, far away from the major power plants. So that's why long land transmission lines are there. So integration of renewable energy can be a very, very good uh, idea for mining companies. If uh, you can uh, implement large scale solar farms for them, because solar is the most abundant, you know, but it depends upon area. Uh, again, as I mentioned that uh, wind can be an option, but it depends that uh, uh, whether you are having that uh, wind energy uh, available or wind speed available or not. So yes, uh, your solar integration can be a very good idea and they can reduce carbon uh, footprint. And uh, for the reliability side, I say that uh, you need to have voltage regulation techniques implemented on your mining side because your mining can have heavy loads as well, like induction motors, which are working over there. So that's why uh, the uh, I uh, suggest that voltage regulation needs to be installed at that location along with solar implementation or along with the renewable energy resources. Okay, so yes, uh, next question, please. 
Okay. Um, we still have plenty here, Dr. Manera. How many questions do you still want to entertain this webinar? We can just simply ask them to send an email to our webinars team, uh, depending on your availability. Uh, okay, yeah, sure, sure. Do you still want to continue answering some questions and how many uh, do you want to answer? So if uh, there are any uh, major ones, yes, for sure. Okay, so um, here's like a feedback with a question here. It says, hello, Dr. Manura. This webinar has been very enlightening to me, especially the case study presented. I am a PhD student in the University Technology Petronas, Malaysia. My research is on the power quality improvement of grid connected Phoebe systems. The research is towards the control of the grid connected inverter incorporating active filtering technique to function as the DCAC and also as a SAPF, thereby eliminating the need for additional power conditioning device. Is it possible to contact you for some mentoring, collaboration, or supervision? Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, the name, okay, I, uh, I, I mean, no, thank you so much uh, for uh, your uh, uh, comments and uh, telling uh, us about your ongoing research work. Uh, yes, if you need uh, some help, uh, you can uh, see I am working with EIT. My official EIT email address is there, so uh, we, I can I can I can help you out uh, if you need some help in your ongoing project. And uh, I have looked at the technical details as uh, Liza explained, so I can see that uh, it is also a sort of power quality uh, addressing uh, project, power quality side. So yes, we can uh, we can work uh, out. Uh, something if uh, you need help okay thanks Liza. awesome so we have one from charles uh his uh, his question is what are the alternatives to reduce or eliminate the cost of batteries okay so uh the initial cost of uh, the initial cost of solar and batteries and alternatives if uh, uh you want to uh, want to propose so one of the idea is to make your solar as working as on grid like uh, uh, it is a net metering site a net metering mean that you can if you have excess generation you can sell to your utility if you have uh, lower generation you can purchase from your utility so this is one of the option if you want to cut down the cost of battery and uh, you are you because of course batteries needs to be uh, replaced uh, be, they have certain lifetime so if you don't want to use that uh, can be one of the option on grid option can be there and uh, this is what we have utilized in this project so far but battery as i told you the future uh, research which we are uh, now imposing in this uh, and proposing in this project is the implementation of batteries great another one from Olavida. Is converter as mentioned by you, um, Dr. Manura, the same as charge controller? Uh, this is basically, uh, thanks for your question, Olamida. It is basically a switching converter. Switching means that uh, we set uh, in power electronics, we set uh, the working of uh, solid state devices to work on spec uh, specific voltage and current. So. Uh, they need to uh, basically uh, go on different levels of voltage and current accordingly. So this is basically uh, not like a charge controller. It is basically a switching uh, like a device which actually can switch to different levels which, with our which are defined by the standard uh, in, for voltage and current operations. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And Linda. we have... Um, Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, please go ahead with the further question. Uh, I think, yep, I think we can have a couple more. While well, we have from Engineer Rabar, how we meet system inertia for system stability when we use more PV? Uh, yes, system inertia is one of uh, one of the hard thing. One of uh, 
the challenging thing. Uh, as I told you that synchronous generators are working and their inertia is very good and their inertia gets affected because of that. So uh, the proposal is that that whenever we are having uh, more and more solar integration, then you need to have emergency uh, backups in your system to maintain the inertia that way backups can be, you know, there are plenty of ways of storage uh, that uh, batteries or uh, fly option. So storage needs to be there for emergency hand situation handling to maintain system inertia. Okay, so okay, next one. So just one more, as I promise. Um, <laughs> have you considered synchronous converters? Uh, uh, pardon that. Uh, hybrid. Um, answer here says um, in hybrid converters. Have you considered synchronous converters? Uh, no, synchronous converters has not been discussed only we have uh, looked on hybrid converter side and their implementation because we were as i mentioned that we were looking towards you know the load side load aspect so that's why uh, hybrid converters were being discussed okay thank you so much dr manera and uh, i'd like to have our courses in here uh, for those who are interested in anything related to hydrogen um, energy or renewable energy. We have our graduate certificates, master's degree programs, advanced diplomas, um, certificate of professional certificates and bachelor's degree programs in here. And um, these are our upcoming webinars as well. You can go to our website, www.eit.edu.au slash news dash events dot slash events for our upcoming webinars. And also for those who would like to request for the certificate, you can scan this QR code in here. And I am also sending you the link to request if you don't want the code in the chat. So I'm sending it to you now, please. Hold Hi, everyone. Is the link not working? Um, Neville, could you please try again, try to refresh and try again the link? If not, kindly try the QR code. I hope that works. Okay. Thank you so much, John, for confirming that um, it works and Kushal as well for confirming that the QR code works. Um, for those who can't reach the page of Neville, can we try another browser? All right, so we're done with our questions. For those who still have questions over the, and for the questions that we are not able to answer anymore because of the time, feel free to send your questions to webinars at eit.edu.au and we will be forwarding that to Dr. Manera so that we can accommodate those questions. For those who would like to have a look at our courses, please go to our website. That's www.eit.edu.au. And when you go to the course schedule part, you can see the schedules of our upcoming courses. For those who'd like to visit us in Perth, our head office is at 1031 Wellington Street, West Perth. We also have our phone numbers in here for those calling from inside Australia and for also those calling um, from outside Australia. So hopefully um, we can still touch base with everyone. Feel free to reach out in these through these channels if you have any concerns or have any inquiries about our courses. Thank you so much, everyone. I am sharing again the certificate link in the chat so that you can 
submit your request. Please make sure to submit your certificate request on or before Sunday evening. That is our deadline on or before Sunday evening. Okay? I'm sending the link again. Please bear with me. everyone thank you so much for joining we really appreciate it thank you so much as well dr manira uh, the webinar ends now and hope to see you all in our next topics for renewable energy thanks Lizanne. thank you so much everyone thanks